Hello, Alex. Hello. Hi, good to be with you again today. Um, we're going to continue our help series on how to walk through and with someone in some of life's what we're calling most challenging struggles or situations. Um, and it's our privilege today to have our dear friend, Ginger Jacks, to join us to talk about um, her journey of profound grief and losing a child. Um, I'd love to tell everybody a little bit about our friend. Uh, Ginger has been married to Kevin for 32 years. Woohoo! A big shout out mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. um, she's the mother of three uh, children, a daughter and two sons, and she is uh, notably a grandmother of three children under the age of three, so mm. she's busy in that world. Um, she is a woman that we know has always been deeply committed to the scriptures and to the honor and glory of Christ, evidenced by her 23 years of leadership in Bible study fellowship, mm -hmm. um, and just walking her, you know, watching her walk her life out. In 2021, um, God called her to get her certification in biblical counseling to uh, be able to even just use her story more in the lives of parents and even widows that have lost someone dear to them that they love. So mm -hmm. she now has a counseling practice in Montgomery, Alabama called Hope in the Unseen, which I love mm -hmm. the name of your mm -hmm. ministry, Ginger. Um, Ginger, it's so good to have you with us today. And I was reminded that it's been 13 years since Virginia went to be with the Lord and she would have been mm -hmm. 30 by earth years. I'm not sure mm -hmm. how heavenly years work. Um, but, you know, your story touches um, our families so deeply because uh, at the time of Virginia's homegoing, we were very closely knit together in friendship and in church mm -hmm. and in our school community. And um, I, I really don't know that there's a September that doesn't go by that at some point mm -hmm. um, my daughter KK, who was really good friends with Virginia and a teammate and Paul and I uh, don't reflect on the mm -hmm. fact that wow it's been this many years or it's been you know that that mm -hmm. long mm -hmm. and um i was talking to kk my daughter recently and you know every time we talk about this I, I feel like we just have always have the burning tears in our eyes and still feel that gut punch um you know mm -hmm. and my daughter said this about virginia i just said you know we're doing this podcast i'd love to know something that you remember about virginia mm -hmm. to share and she said mom while me and my friends talked about jesus um, Virginia talked and walked with Jesus. <laughs> mm, mm. Um, and she, she said she was the kindest, most humble and funny, kind of zany, silly girl. And she was that girl, the one who lit up the room. And KK said everyone wanted her to say that they were her best friend, right? She was that girl. It's <laughs> like, I'm your best friend. She's my best friend. Mm, um, and I do you. think that one of the things that made it harder for all of us was, you know, her age, for one, being so young. Um, but also, she was just such an amazing young woman, such a gem, and there was a feeling that her life was really, you know, cut short. And I know for my family, it was the first time that we had really walked through um, a, a tragedy like this. And um, I can remember coming to the hospital the night um, that Virginia passed. and honestly not knowing what to do or what to say. And so I'm excited about a podcast like this that maybe can help our listeners who have dealt with loss or who are ministering to someone with this magnitude of loss do it better than hopefully we did it um, mm -hmm. at that time. But losing a loved one, especially a child, feels like an unbearable trial. And mm -hmm. we would love for you to share a little bit about your story um, about Virginia the day that she went mm -hmm. to be with Jesus and a bit about your initial grief. Mm, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, it was 2010. Um, she had just turned 17 in August, and she went to an Auburn game with a friend. And on the way back, she called me and said she was headed back. She was in a car accident. She was the only one. There were four in the car that was um, taken home to be with the Lord. And we did not know until we got up to Auburn. We had heard that she was in an accident, but we didn't know till we were up at the hospital that she actually um, had gone to be with the Lord. And it, um, you know, you hear stories of people that have um, gone through tragedies and, and you feel for them, but when it happens to you, um, it's, it, it was overwhelming. I, I never, never, it gave me such a compassion too for the others that had gone through it that I had never known what they were struggling with, but it was, it was, overwhelming overwhelming and so we got in the car um, actually Brenda 
came up and um, some of my friends and our pastor and um, we talked to them and then we came in the car and came home and saw Kirby and um, he was 15 at the time and um, my son Bowen turned 12 on the day of her funeral so my other kids were, were fairly young but the the journey was um, it was it was unreal it was very 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 deep very very heavy and um, I, I'll never forget Bowen was asleep the night that it happened and so the next morning when he came in he had no idea and um, we told him he wept and he asked us to question it was very powerful because we always when you lose a child or go through any tragedy you always want to go through the what ifs what if we had not let her go to the game we actually Kevin and I had stayed up all night going through the what ifs and so you know, Bowen composed himself, and then he said, can I ask you a question? And we said, sure, Bowen. And he said, when God decided when Virginia was born, did he know then when she was going to die? Mm, Powerful wow. question. <laughs> and Kevin said, yes, son. In Psalm 139, it says he ordains our days. He, um, and so he said, well, can I ask y'all one more question? And we said, sure. And he said, was there anything we could have done to change it? <laughs> we said, no, no, there wasn't. And so he left and went back in the house, and Kevin said, I think the Lord just spoke <laughs> through our son. Mm -hmm. So that was that was something we could go back to. Um, but yes, very, very, very heavy. Hmm. Ginger, for um, our people, our podcast community listening, you know, what would you say are the best way the best way people can respond and minister in those immediate days following a tragedy of losing a child well it you know you're you're in shock you know for weeks you're in shock i, mean, I don't know months everyone is different you know some some people want to go off and be by themselves um, you know, they grieve that way. Some people want to be with people all the time. That would be me. And my husband, Kevin, wanted to just go to the country. He's a big hunter, and he just wanted to spend that alone time with the Lord. But for people, I guess my advice would, whatever they're experiencing, if they want to go to and lay in bed, <laughs> go lay in bed with them. Mm -hmm. If they want to go out to lunch, go to lunch with them. If they want to cry, cry with them. If they want to laugh, laugh with them. Just watch their mood and try to move in next to them. Mm -hmm. um, because I think so many friends want to get them out of the, the grief or um, how can I do that? And really, they just need your presence. You know, it's like Job's friends. They were doing great until they started speaking. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the same way with... Um, and I had really close friends that just were there. They let me talk when I wanted to talk about it. And if I didn't, they didn't, you know, they didn't bring it up. So I think that was really helpful for me. When you say that, Ginger, it reminds me of um, maybe what not to do also. And I remember a conversation with you probably many years later and it seemed like people had a timeline in their mind that you needed to be on that of what grieving should look like for you and wanted to kind of move you on their timeline. Did you hear that? Uh, -uh it, she froze. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to start with my question. I'm going to start my question again. Okay. Um, so, Ginger, when you say what's helpful, it reminds me of things that some things that might not be helpful. And I, I, I will always remember a conversation you and I had at Starbucks one day, many years later, I think. Um, and it seemed like what was the most unhelpful was that people had a timeline for your grief. Like they wanted to move you mm -hmm. along a timeline that they had in their mind for you. I'm 
sorry. I, I can't hear you. Oh, did it cut out again? What was your... Yeah. Ah, it's cutting out for me, too. And I do not understand. What is it I saying I think it's only cutting out for you, Alex. Now it is. Now you're moving around. Yes, sorry. See, it just cut out again. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it's not on our network. I don't know. A friends, a neighbor. Probably your neighbors. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to switch networks. It's not oh, on yeah. that one. Yeah. That's so weird. Okay, so what yeah. happened was when I lost the internet about two, about a week and a half ago, they gave me a temporary network and it had flipped to that. Oh, I see. It's not my internet, though. It's The problem's never been the internet. The problem was the Eero, the booster. And so we had to re-boost the booster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they fixed it. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's really not a question, Ginger. I'm just kind of making a comment and letting you respond to it. First of all, I didn't. I, I heard all the way to the very end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, it did it again. Yeah. Okay. Me. <laughs> I was like, wow, we have a new noise. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> wasn't me either. Wasn't my bracelets. <laughs> yeah, you can tell that's where I work at my store that we collect them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Please, Jesus, for internet that works. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Ginger, that um, reminds me of um, not only what we can do when people are grieving, but maybe what we shouldn't do when people are grieving. Mm -hmm. And I'm remembering a time where you and I sat at Starbucks a couple of years after Virginia's death. And it seemed like people were wanting to put you on their timeline of where they thought you needed to be in your grief. And that that is particularly not helpful. 
It is not. I, you know, and I'm, I think I said that earlier, that grief is so different for everybody. And um, and then you can you can go through a year or two years, and then the third year can be your worst. Or, you know, four years or five. We, there's no formula, unfortunately, for grief. And the process is the healing. You have to go through the processes and the, and the stages. And, you, and, and no one can tell you when those stages are going to be. That's all a part of your journey. And um, that's very right. So many people, after a year, they should be fine. After they've gone through all the first, and it's it's never like that. I'll, I'll assure you on that. But it 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 is different for each each individual. Ginger, in season five on suffering, we talked about um, some common questions we have in the midst of suffering, like why would God allow my suffering? Mm-hmm. Where is He? What is He up to? Mm-hmm. What does suffering well look like that I could be used by God? And I, I just wonder um, if those were some questions, I'm sure they were, that you struggle with. And mm-hmm. um, how did you overcome those? Well, I did. I, you know, I, I lost my dad six months before Virginia. And I was very close. I was the only girl. And that was devastating. And then this, of course, the loss of Virginia. And then I, I got cancer on my face and had to get a large amount of plastic surgery. And so I started thinking, okay, wait, am I doing something wrong here? So I just started diving into the Word, and the Word was constantly reminding me of all the people that have gone through the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament that struggled, that went through death, that went through tragedy, and yet God used it in a mighty way in their life to conform them, to make them into who He wants them to be. And I remember Romans 5, that verse, you know, we rejoice in our suffering. And I used to think, there's no way, there's no way, Lord. That was kind of my verse that I kept going back to. But it goes on and says what He's going to produce within. He's going to produce this perseverance. He's going to produce this character. And then my, the last verse that really, the, the, the very end of that passage was because he, the Holy Spirit pours out God's love. Mm-hmm. And I saw that in a real way. Every day I would go to him and I, on my knees, on the floor, whatever it was, and I would, I would focus on him and what he did on the cross for me. And his love just I can't I can't explain it. Before I knew he died for me, but it took on an incredibly different meaning. And it is what I thought, well if he can go on the cross and he can die for us and he can go through all that pain so that I can have a relationship with him, that I can spend eternity with him, that I can see my daughter again, mm. then I can get up and serve him. So it was it was the word and it was prayer. It was just being honest with God. You know, these are my doubts. But you can handle my doubts, and um, so yeah, it was it was the word and and prayer. Mm-hmm. Ginger, I, I remember out because um, it is supernatural. It is the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. pouring His love into your heart, and that love that God has mm-hmm. for you in Christ that He confirms through the Holy Spirit, and then that produces the ability to have faith or to trust mm-hmm. what He says mm-hmm. is true. And that future hope is what you're so much holding on to. Yeah. Um, that it's not the end of the story. That no. you will see Virginia again. And so will we. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I know she's going to be there to usher us all in. You know. That's right. That's um, right. And I remember we- after my dad was gone, my mom kept saying, if Jesus and Jesse, my dad's name was Jesse. I'm sorry. If Virginia and Jesse could just come back, everything would be perfect. And... I got to the point and I thought, you know what? No, it wouldn't. You know, we would still have all the things that are going on in our life. Only if Jesus comes back will things be made right. So it it, it took a while. I just really wanted to see Virginia. I'll be honest at first. And I really, there was many days I just wanted to go home because it was so heavy and I was tired of the struggle. But through seeing that he was taking me through the struggle, he was my Lord. He was my Savior, not Virginia. She never was intended to be. Then I was able to say, no, I do want to see Jesus first and foremost. And then 
of course I want to see Virginia but um, it, you know it's a, it was a change for me like Ginger, I remember. Oh. Well, I was just going to say, I just think it creates such a deeper worship of Jesus because mm -hmm. of him, you will see. Like I think yeah. about when Jesus says, get up, little girl, you're just sleeping, you know, and how to every um, believer that goes to be with the Lord, they're just, you know, they've gone to sleep and Jesus wakes them up. And so I just think it's it's mm. because like I worship Jesus and in that worship and what he has done is that guarantee of the resurrection yeah. from the dead. Mm -hmm. And so it just makes that worship so much sweeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've shared your tool with several people that, that you, you used to say um, you used to go through your ABCs mm -hmm. and you would um, you would say ah! <laughs> <laughs> used to go through what <laughs> back up <laughs> I've shared your tool <laughs> okay um, Ginger, I've shared your tool with uh, many people. You used to go through your ABCs and say an attribute of God or an attribute mm -hmm. of Jesus. And I remember you saying it was just a moment by moment clinging to him. So you would say, like, Jesus is amazing. Um, Jesus blesses me. Jesus is is um, caring and compassionate. And you used to do it. And, and I remember you saying sometimes I'd get all the way through the alphabet and I'd have to start over again. And it just taught you to fix your mind. Yes, and it was so um, incredibly hard at first, after it happens, um, because it's so hard to get it off your mind. You know, I'm, I'm thinking that Virginia's not there. I'm thinking that about the accident. I'm thinking about how am I gonna make it through life? I mean, you're just, you're. It, it's such a tiring, I remember Lou Priolo told me that grieving is one of the most tiring physically and mentally things you can go through. And I think that, that was just trying to take my focus off of what I was really grieving and hurting for. And the only thing that helped me at that time was pulling out a piece of paper or when I'm driving going through the alphabet and, and, and resting my mind by focusing on him. And sometimes, what, 10, 12 times during the night, I would be going through the alphabet. But it really, it reminded me of who he is and what he's, he's promised and what he is for me instead of my circumstances and what I was missing and grieving. So, yes, it was very helpful, still helpful in mm -hmm. issues in my life. Such a practical application of set your mind on things above. That's right. That's and right. And on the things of this earth. So um, I, I can remember, I feel like we just all sprang into action. Virginia wanted to run, uh, I think it was a half marathon. Yes. And so we ended up putting together, you know, uh, an event and getting little wristbands. I remember uh, the wristbands we had and things to honor, honor her. Um, I guess that's just one of the questions I have is like, how do you, how do you honor, is it important um, to honor your loved ones that have gone on before you? And if so, what are some ways? It is. It's, we never stop talking about Virginia with my boys. Um, we always talked about it freely. We just wanted them to feel like they, that, you know, she was absent from us, but that she was, they would see her again. So we didn't want to like n not talk about her. And so for me, I wanted to talk about her still. I wanted to share stories about basketball when she played or things that she did um, in junior high and high school, even when she was a child. And so it was so important that she wasn't forgotten. And when you honor um, someone who's lost a child, it, it really, really does encourage them. Anytime that you want to ask them, tell me about the story when Virginia played this basketball game and did this. For them to be able to tell that story again is very healing. It is. It's very healing. My friends were so sweet about that. I, I know they heard stories 30, 40 times. I'd say, have you ever heard the story? And they'd say, no, tell us. You know, it got to be a joke. But they, they allowed me to continuously talk about Virginia because you're talking about your other kids, you know, mm -hmm. and you, you still want to talk about the one that's not here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you ever Ginger, in your mind just can imagine you share with us just some of the long term is, what effects she's doing of the... grief and losing a child? 
do yes. that. Yes. Yes, I'm I do. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm going to stop right there. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That I think Alex got cut off, and so we should start over. I'm not sure what you were saying, mm -hmm. Alex, because I think that you came in. So I'll let you mm -hmm. <clears throat> jump in with what you were saying. So what's <coughs> happening is, like, like one of you is freezing for me, but not the other yeah, one. So I can't always tell if I'm frozen or not. So. Oh, okay, we're going to have to get this fixed. <laughs> this is terrible. Why is it so mm -hmm. bad today? Alex, mm -hmm. is, is, is your, um, I just want to make sure that your internet has not switched back any weird way. Is it where it's supposed to be? Mm -hmm. It's where it's supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Ginger had just talked about honoring and remembering people. Mm -hmm. And so you were going to follow up on that. I think. <laughs> Mm. Are you back? Okay. You want me just to jump in? <laughs> Even this is though. Terrible. Now Brenda's gone for me. Ginger, we're going to get through this because the devil oh, clearly does not want us to. I know. I mean, you. this. <laughs> We've never, you know, ever, it's... ever. Are you, yeah. <laughs> Chit chat. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Well, it looks like it's just going to be you and me that in conversation. I, just that you <laughs> I know. I don't well, know when Alex is coming back. Huh? I can hear her. So it just is going in and out. Mm -hmm. It's uh -huh. crazy. One so thing I was going to mention go that was very help has been very helpful in my counseling. Yeah. Is um, when once we um, we lost Virginia, and then I had my cancer, and then. Um, Alan, which I'm, I don't know if I would say, went back in to do the surgery again. And it was just a low time. Virginia's dog died. I mean, all these yeah, things. And so, you. or her cat, I'm sorry. And we went outside to bury her cat. And I'll never forget, it's like I drew a line in the sand. It had been like seven months. And uh, Kevin wanted to have a burial for the cat. We were all sitting there. And I said, I, that's it. I can't do this anymore. I think it was just the heaviness and the sadness. And I said, I don't think I can know it. I go another day like this, Kevin. And he said, well, can you go 15 minutes? I said, well, of course I can go 15 minutes. You know, it was almost it bothered me. He said that. And he said, oh, Ginger, that's how I make it through my whole day. Mm -hmm. I asked him to make take me 15. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I ask him to take me 30. And then I keep asking him all through the day. And it's very been very helpful with some of the ladies that I meet with because they'll I'll text they'll say I'm having a 15 minute day mm -hmm. so that lets me know that they're really struggling minute by minute so anyway I didn't know if he wanted me to share that mm -hmm. yeah I tell you what we can um we can even just bounce off because one of the questions I have is what was it like for your husband and maybe you could share that story. oh okay okay perfect mm -hmm. yeah anyway. um, how often do you get to see your grandbabies well, a lot. I mean, they came through Sunday yesterday. Um, it's just an hour and a half away, so okay. it's good. They'll be here for Thanksgiving. Where do, they, where do they live? Columbus. Kirby works for Pratt Whitney. It's a um, he's like a mechanic for airplanes and helicopters. Oh my goodness, Columbus, oh. Georgia. Yeah. Oh wow, that's awesome. And he, he's so he, you know he's kind of like Kevin. He's real good with his hands. So yeah. he he's he's moving up and doing real well. So that's awesome. And what about Bowen? Where is he? Now? Is he <laughs> Lord? What's he Lord, <laughs> Lord help Bowen. <laughs> Bowen's in Austin, such a sweet town. Um, <laughs> hey, we Chattanooga's went... modeled after Austin. <laughs> really? Well, that's his... yeah. But anyway. hopefully, we leave the weird and the the weirder. <laughs> we are getting weirder here, I have to say, but not as weird as Austin. Well, it's just such a. Um, um, Law City, but he. We went out there a couple of weeks ago. Spent um, a week with them. Kevin and I did, and had a good time. Um, 
Yes, he's still modeling, um, but he does. He's a personal trainer too, and um, he's also doing DJing. You know, when they get the big thing and then the beat and the drop, <laughs> and he had his first gig this weekend, and then, and then he said he met a girl that loves the Lord. This was just a few days ago, so I'm like, really? <laughs> hey, the difference a, a godly girl could make, huh? Yeah. He knows, he knows he's seen it in you. He's seen it in y'all's marriage. He's seen it in the hardship. Like, he's seen the Lord and knows the sweetness and the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. And he's but, sweet. I mean, he has he has a heart for homeless. Oh, when he's in, we were in Austin, he said, I hope y'all don't mind. I go visit these people. He went to the river, and they're all like, Bowen! He brings them food. He has always had a tender heart toward the homeless. So I think he ministers a lot to the homeless there. Oh. He's just got a very sweet spirit. Um, his photographers are gay, and, and when I'm, there's been some killings, and they said, I'm scared to go out, and Bowen's like, I would be too if I were you. You don't know where you're going. <laughs> so he's bold. He's become bold, but. That's amazing. So That's so fun. Well, I you know. have to send me like a, like a modeling picture of him. It's uh, so awesome. In the I, know. I know you probably hate it, but it's so funny to see somebody like you know, and you've grown, like you've seen from a little boy, and all of a sudden they're like so studly. And, and so <laughs> shy. <laughs> Bowen was so always shy. so shy. And now he's just yeah. out there. <laughs> I will send y'all one of them, but I do. Everybody's like, oh, that's so cool. I go, well, then let your son be a model. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a tricky world to be in, I'm sure. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great that y'all get to go see him. And even though Austin is weird, it is a great city. And there's a oh. really great church in Austin. If you guys go well, out there again, it's Austin Stone. And for this series, um, the guy that we interviewed on suicide is from that church. Okay. Austin Stone, S-T-O-N-E? Correct. Yep. Are y'all echoing? Not really. Okay. And if you go back out there, some really good friends of ours, um, he's in golf ministry. It's Carrie Ward. I don't know. Did you ever know Carrie Ward from? Yeah, that name sounds familiar. Okay, well, she, she, was, she became, left Montgomery, became a missionary, um, moved to Austin to work for Austin Stone Church, met her husband, who's in golf ministry, and they just had a baby with, like, really severe special needs. Their first little baby. <gasps> Did yeah, they it's been, yeah, it's been, she's like, she just texted me about Christine Chapel's book and what I knew. I was like, she's awesome. Get her book. We just interviewed her because she's going through such uh, PTSD. I am so sorry. Well, I, we but have not been chart. out. Yeah, Bowen is like, I don't know, you know, and you're kind of scared at this point I know. to just allow him go. So I think the next time he's coming for Christmas, but I'm going to plan a time where I can go or and Kevin goes to, can go too, but to make sure we stay over on a Sunday. Well, you know, you go and you guys want to go to church, just reach back out to me and I'll connect you with some people at that church. Okay. That would be great. Yeah, that a, would be I, great. I think it's Especially since church. he's met such a godly woman that loves Jesus. I'm sure she'd right. want to go. Got a little interest. Got a little interest in Jesus going. <laughs> Whatever. I haven't asked many questions. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Yes. Yes. Hi. I'm back. Maybe for a minute. Might be gone. Yeah, it again. sounds clear. It looks clear. Yeah, now. Okay. hear it too. Like a... We just need to figure out where we're jumping back in when you get done.
Okay. 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 Malia, is that new? Because this didn't used to happen. Is that something new that's been turned on? Is that? Do you think that's why it's happening? The continual upload. Is that? I don't know. All right. Hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I leave. Okay. Okay. 